Hello everyone. Myself Bhumit uh, from collegeduna.com. Today we are having with uh, Kiyas Das Gupta sir. He is a director at uh, Dhirubha Ambani Institute of Information and Communication Technology. Hello sir. Welcome to Education Portal College Dunya. Hello. Hello sir. Good afternoon. Mm, sir. So sir, uh, starting, you, with, uh, starting with the question our session. My first question to you is that you have held key position at Education Institute throughout your professional career, right sir? So sir, what are the key factors that keep you connected with education sector? You see, uh, if you ask me, uh, I was uh, involved in uh, many important activities of research uh, in Indian Space Research Organization uh, in different, uh, you know, um, object, uh, different projects in the programs. I was a director of a um, center called Development Education Communication Unit, ECHO. And uh, then uh, I was also uh, involved in uh, many other activities of uh, um, payload design of uh, for the satellite. After that, uh, I uh, joined the uh, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, uh, which is one of the kind of an institute university, which is a degree university uh, uh, but, um, uh, uh, under the uh, Department of Space. And, and uh, after that, I currently I'm director of Dhirubhai Ammani Institute of Information Communication Technology, which is an unique institute. It is an ICT centric institute, and uh, it has undergraduate program, postgraduate program, and it is uh, I'm having a very vibrant research ambience. And at the same time, uh, it, our institute is uh, 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 you know, a research-led uh, academic institute. Now, to uh, tell you, uh, any good institute uh, will have uh, three pillars. You know? uh, one is called the academics, uh, another is called the research and innovation, and the third one is uh, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, service to the society. So we believe that, uh, that any institute which has to uh, be relevant and which has to be accepted internationally as well as nationally, uh, you have to have the, these three ingredients uh, uh, which will uh, um, uh, attract the students and which will also make the students understand uh, that academics uh, is not a standalone activity. It, is, uh, it has to be coupled with research and innovation, which creates uh, the creativity among the young students. And at the same time, we should also understand that what is the need of the society. And knowing that uh, the students can provide certain um, uh, new design, new techniques and new approaches. So uh, basically, uh, we believe uh, that any academic institute uh, of a repute uh, has to make sure that, that you know, the students, faculty members are always involved or always engaged uh, in, such, in academics as well as research, such that the creativity and the innovation spirit among the students uh, uh, grow and such that the students' uh, analytical skill at the same time, you know, the uh, inquisitiveness uh, and the research potential increases. Very nicely explained about the question, sir. So, sir, coming to the next question, being the director of uh, Dhirubha Amban Institute of Information and Communication Technology, what is your philosophy of leadership? How would you describe your leadership style? You see, uh, according to me, um, being a director of any institute, whether it is Dhirubha Amban Institute of Information and Communication Technology or it is an institute or any other reputed institute, you have to uh, be a team leader and you have to lead from the uh, front. And because uh, uh, you have to, uh, you know, you, your team consists of faculty members, team consists of students, researchers, and all these things. Uh, to, being a, to become a leader, uh, it is first thing is that you should uh, appreciate the work of your team members. And the second thing is that uh, you should also um, understand uh, that you know uh, you cannot trust your ideas among the team members uh, because if you trust your ideas, then uh, you know the, the team members will not be 
are able to uh, will not be able to grow. And the, another important parameter is that being a leader, you should not take the credit. You should take the blame, or you should take the responsibilities. And especially in the critical situation when the it is in a bad shape, you should be able to. You should act as a shock absorber, and you should be able to get enough give enough confidence among your team members so that the team members flourish. And when the uh, when the success comes, the whole credit goes to the um, uh, your team members. And the most important parameter is you should be a good listener. Because what happens when you are in a team? The if you cannot listen, you will not be able to capture the essence of the um, you know the uh, minutes of the meeting. And then if you understand the essence, then you should be able to implement it properly. So according to me, I believe you know, to be a leader, you should be uh, um, 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 be an excellent team worker. You should have an excellent compatibility with team member. Team members should have trust on you. You should not trust your ideas among three, uh, team members, and you should uh, uh, be able to ex- uh, share your information, your experience, such that the team members grow. Very well said, sir. So coming to the next question, the education system in India and other foreign countries are structured very differently, right? So in your experience, what can an inbound students gain from studying here in your institute? Pardon? Can you repeat the question, please? Sir, in your experience, what can an inbound students gain from studying here in your institute? Can you be a little louder? Sir, in your experience, what can an inbound students gain from studying here in your institute? Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> you need much more. Sir, in your experience, what can an inbound students gain from studying here in your institute? You want to know how, why uh, how the students come to our institute? No, no. In your experience. What can an inbound students gain from studying here in your institute? Inbound students. Okay, in, inbound students, right? Yes, sir. Yes. You see, uh, but to tell you, uh, we have a special, uh, um, you know, reserve seats for um, uh, foreign and uh, uh, nationals. At the same time, uh, non-resident Indian in our institute, and I can boast uh, that uh, this is the institute in Gujarat. We really take uh, students. Uh, with uh, um, NRI or foreign nationals who come. Now, to answer your question that why people should come to our institute or why they should come, you know, why uh, India should become an education hub where the students across the uh, globe should come to you. That I believe that is the question which you are trying to ask me. According to me, uh, I feel that the students who have to come to India, there should be certain takeaways for them. The, the takeaways are what type of programs we have, what types of challenges we provide to the students, and also uh, what type of ecosystem we have so the students' analytical skill, research power, and other things are, in, are um, you know enhanced. Now, to tell you a thing that if we um, uh, um, if we um, run some programs uh, which are innovative, for example, in our institute, we have started an undergraduate program which is called BTEC in Maths and Computing. And we have an undergraduate program which is called ICT uh, with uh, honors with a specialized minor in computational science. But the courses should be innovative, courses should be contextual, and the courses should allow the students to attract. That is one thing. Then we should have a, a good infrastructure where the students can come and stay in the hostel. We should have a good uh, cafeteria where the students can come. And we should have a good social ambience where the students can come and they don't get bored and they enjoy as well as in extracurricular and the curricular activities. 
So getting inbound student is very, very difficult unless uh, you don't have a good faculty and you should, uh, uh, you, should have a, you should have good faculties, you should have good programs and also you should have good infrastructure and also good resource centers in terms of library, in terms of uh, um, cafeteria and other things which will allow attract the students. Very nicely explained, sir. So coming to the next question, how does the curriculum of your institute insert the best practice of industry? Okay, uh, the uh, best practice for any instu any institute, as a matter of fact, uh, is that you know there is no stereotype courses. Uh, we our program, if you see, we have course which are called the uh, core courses which will give you uh, the foundations. Uh, and in addition to that, we provide a lot of electives. Uh, electives is basically giving the exposure to the students to understand the new subjects, new techniques, and new concepts. And uh, if, you, uh, if you see, and we have a continuous evaluation system, uh, which allows to see that the students grow um, a mono, a, a, the growth is always uh, a monotonically increasing and it, there is no ups and downs so far as the growth is concerned. So what we feel is that if the best practice is what you should have uh, a proper academics and also you should have a proper evaluation system. Evaluation should, system should be a continuous evaluation. And another thing is that uh, what is important for the best practice is that you, your electives should not be a stereotype. Electives should be depending upon uh, the, uh, the, uh, the society's need, depending upon the industry's need. So all courses should be relevant. That will follow the best practice. So sir, on that note, my next question to you is, what do you see as the institute's greatest strength? I think uh, um, I, um, the greatest strength of the institute is the faculty. Because, you know, most of the faculties and, uh, are not most, you can say almost 100% faculties are having PhDs from the leading uh, premier institutes in India as well as abroad. Now the faculties are the most, is, the, is one of the important pillars of the institute. And the faculty has ex an excellent research credential and also have a strong foundation in academics. So if we have the good faculty, if we have the good research and the research comes what? Research comes in terms of sponsored research, research comes in terms of consultancy, research comes in terms of uh, international research and uh, collaboration or national collaboration. So I can tell you uh, very proudly that our institute have uh, working with a lot of R&D organization in India, like ISRO, like, um, you know, um, uh, a DST, ACRP, all these places where we look for different projects, different and different project comes means you have most important research problem and the research problem attracts the best student. So if we have the good faculty, if you have the good infrastructure and if you have good students, this gives a synergy where the ecosystem becomes vibrant. Very nicely explained, sir. So, sir, jumping to the last question. How do you tend to establish a healthy relation and environment in your institute? You see, um, a friendly relation comes when you are a leader. Because you are a leader and a mentor. Because in, a, in, a, in any academic institute, you have the faculty, you have the administrative staff, you have the students, uh, and you have the infrastructure. Now, you have to always discuss deliberate uh, uh, um, with the faculty such that a trust is built uh, between the faculty members as well as, as the administration or the director. Now, how it can happen? When uh, the, we, uh, you have to interact with them, you want to understand what they expect. 
and you have to also tell what institute expects and if they know what institute expects and if i know uh, the director knows uh, what faculty uh, needs or the students expectations are uh, and that will automatically synergize and that will create a, a some sort of a you know a resonance in the system which will uh, provide uh, uh, you know uh, a good uh, understanding and the good trust because the trust is the most important thing and most of the another thing is that it should, our whole process should be transparent and the process should be such that it is not depend on a person but it depends on a system uh, very well said sir so sir thank you so much for giving such uh, informative information about your college itself thank you so much sir